Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of how to build a Pokedex Discord bot. Now, the one thing that I always recommend before you really start any project is to take some time to think about your project. Think about what it's going to look, how it's going to feel, and what you're really trying to build. Because while it's good to always build projects that are fun and that are a great way to learn skills, it's also important to learn how to gather kind of the requirements and the research necessary to building your project because you kind of need to understand the purpose of your project and why you're building this. That is more of an intrinsic motivation that is always going to be better than just extrinsic factors such as money or, or I mean some people might might be motivated by money but these are things that will keep you consistent to your project and will help you understand what you're trying to build. Now. This part or this uh, episode in particular, we're going to be focusing on doing the research slash kind of investigating what we're building exactly. So as you already saw in the demo, just for imagine if you did not see what the final product looked like, but we were starting from scratch and we had no idea what our plans were. Now, the first thing is obviously we knew that we wanted to build a Pokédex bot, but we have to think about our experiences of what the Pokédex might look like, um, maybe draw back on some Pokemon episodes that we watched growing up as a kid. And those might have different understandings or implications of what this bot might come out to be. So what I always do is I like to go to YouTube and I love good old YouTube. Obviously I have a YouTube channel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get some inspiration just by searching, you know, Pokemon, Pokedex. And this is how I actually started. And there's one episode in particular that I kind of just remember growing up as a kid. And that was when Ash pointed the Pokedex, probably the first time he ever used the Pokedex, to the Rattata. So let's find that episode real quick. And let's just kind of get inspired to think about what it looked like. Uh, let's see, Pokemon Pokedex episode Rattata. Yeah, this is it. So this is a really funny episode. And I'm gonna skip over here. So this is kind of what I watched. Get inspired by this Pokédex. So this is a really funny scene, and I remember this. But we learned a lot about what the Pokédex does in general. And if you remember, I think it's probably somewhere around here. Well, if you remember, what you see here is we notice that Ash is pointing his Pokedex to the Rattata, and that automatically recognizes that Pokemon and gives him information regarding that Pokemon. So some features you might consider in building your bot might be like an image recognition or Pokemon recognition. I can't spell today. So like Poke image slash Pokemon recognition. So we're just gathering all the features that we could possibly build. And this is kind of how we just derive inspiration. And in designing, this might be something called like uh, your storyboard, your picture board, your inspiration board. This is kind of what Pinterest is. Um, for development, I kind of just use this as kind of like my feature board of things that I want to build. And then over time, we're going to scope it so we have just the right amount of things that we want to build and things that we think are cool and valuable to our first iteration. So Pokemon image recognition is one. We also hear in this video that, you know, it's talking to Ash. It's, right. it's a little witty and actually can even be really witty too and have really smart Alec rem remarks to Ash. But let's just say that it offers audio capabilities. So audio playback, audio playback, uh, Pokemon investigate or Pokemon in question, I guess. So Pokemon in query. So query. Okay. And let's see. So I also like to draw back on some experiences growing up as a kid. And obviously one of the best experiences was playing the Pokemon game. So, and I remember it very vividly of what it kind of looked like. I think that was kind of the perfect example of what the Pokedex should look and feel, especially in a video game because they translated that from the TV show. So let's just do, we'll go to Google here and we're gonna do Pokemon Pokedex and I played Pokemon Blue, so Pokemon Blue. And I just, you know, go to Im Google Images and this is exactly what I remember growing up as a kid. And also my favorite Pokemon was Squirtle, so I'm just gonna open this, probably not be able to see it in my uh, screen here. Let's see, 
let's uh I wonder if I could just zoom in here. Uh let's just type in Squirtle. I can't wish I can like zoom this in a little bit. Uh well let's just do something that's easy to see versus trying to grab it. Uh, Okay, well, I can't seem to pop up a, a pretty good image of it. This is Mew, so... Um, okay, so it might be hard to see here, but you see that there's Squirtle, and it says Tiny Turtle. Um, it has a height, a weight, and a description, as well as a number, and a little picture of the Squirtle itself. So I'm just going to track that down. So it displays Pokemon information. Pokemon information. It has a name a number, a, a weight in pounds. This is the American version, so a height in feet and inches, so feet, inches. And it has a, we have a number here in the format of NO.007. I'll just put an example there. Um, and then a description that just talks about the Pokemon itself, as well as an icon, so sprite slash icon. Now, it's probably a good idea to just look at some newer versions as well. So let's just do like Pokemon uh, Black and see what that Pokedex looks like. That might give us an even more uh, vivid Im imagery of what a modern day Pokedex would look like. So what is the newer one? I remember, let's see, new Pokemon game. It's funny because I have one of the newer games on my Switch, but I just don't remember it. Um, ooh, this, is, this is interesting. This is from X, Y, and Z. So let's just do Pokemon X. Okay, maybe I have to type Pokedex entry. Maybe that might be easier. All right, here we go. Here's a good example. So, uh, which, here we go. Full. So, okay, so it's some, nothing has really changed. There's actually a type here. So uh, I think that might be what this, is, <laughs> that's not appropriate. Uh, let's see, um, here we go, type. So rock and dragon, so we have a type here. So there's a type as well. So a type, pokey type, Pokemon type. And I don't think anything else has really changed since. I mean, you, have, you see the scene obtained, but that's not gonna be relevant to our bot because there's no like, you're no what tracking in our bot. Um, but yeah, that's that's really all we have here. So we, we see that it displays things. It offers image recognition. It has a playback audio. It plays back to Ash and it displays Pokemon information that's really important. Now, also remember in the game, obviously you can like scroll through different Pokemons, you can like search by the number, you can look up by the name and stuff. So those are just obvious, obviously things that are going to be in a Pokedex. But now we've done some research, we kind of have an idea of what this Pokedex might include. We need to do what we call, you know, scope limiting or limiting our scope of our project um, because we want to avoid scope creeping and scope creeping is when you're essentially creating all of these features that are super duper cool and then you can't finish your product because there's just too many things to build so realistically from here i can already tell image recognition and audio playback those are pretty big features in a bot so i would rather just do one feature and in this case, I would say that the, one of the most important features is the playback. Because if you remember in the in the video, like Ash is talking to the Poke, Pokedex and it's like giving it witty responses. So that's kind of a pretty much a core feature that I would personally think that is more important than image recognition. Now, image recognition is important, but then if you think about it in the poke in the Discord environment, it's kind of gonna it's gonna be a little bit harder. You're gonna have to like upload an image and then download that image. And that might be a really cool feature that is past version two. And it, you might argue that it is a core feature, but that might be a good feature for version two because people can still interact with their bot without having to upload an image. So let's just move this image recognition feature down to a version two. And let's just say that we'll just display Pokemon information. We'll do a name, a number, Pokemon type, We'll do weights and pounds. We'll do a height and feet and inches. We'll do a description and we'll do a sprite and icon. Now, in this stage, I recommend you start looking at different APIs that are available. If you need to build it yourself, doing some form of scraping, or if you need to, or if you have an API that's available for you to use right away, that's something to start investigating now ahead of time because that can give you an idea of how much time this is going to take to build our project. 
And we should also look at um, any libraries or external services, um, such as, you know, text to speech, and that we can utilize to do playback for the Pokemon in question. Now stay tuned to uh, the next episode where we're going to we're going to go over the design aspect of how this might look like and feel, which is actually very important when it comes to project creation. And for now, just subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode.